Hello there YouTube, this is Sybils and Bits back at it again, this time with a Inkbound demo run. As you can see down at the bottom left, we are currently playing the next best demo, which originally was exactly like the technical alpha demo that we were showing off before, except now there's been some considerable changes that we'll go over. I'll discuss my honest feedback about how the game's currently looking right now. And I plan on doing three videos, one for each of the three available classes, and um, to sort of give like an overview of exactly how they play, because sometimes people like to know more about like what kind of classes are available than the overall game structure itself, because that'll become apparent over like the course of three videos. Today we're going to be playing as the Magma Miner, which is... Well, I would say my preferred class. It's definitely not my most comfortable class, and we'll get to that when we get to Moss Cloak, hopefully. But it is just, in my opinion, it's all around just generally consistent. And you just, uh, you have a couple avenues for uh, growth and all of that. As I described in the first video, the Magma Miner is more of like a, uh, a brawler type character. He wants to use as much of his actions aggressively as possible. We're going to be playing in Silver 3. It's the highest difficulty that's currently in the demo. Hopefully we won't get bopped, but the game is significantly harder than it was uh, last time that I showed it off. And I died there, so who knows? Anyways, just going over a general overview. Uh, Magma Miner has the ability of heat is its uh, resource, and it gains a stack of heat whenever it, they hit an enemy. Each stack grants uh, one ability power, which is basically just plus 10% additive damage. And every time I gain two stacks, I gain plus one shield. This allows us to be more aggressive than other characters. Other characters might have to find uh, or invest more into defenses, whereas early game we just get to thrash everything if uh, it wasn't for moss cloak i would say that probably magma miner has the strongest early game in the game it's just that the other classes have much more potential to outscale in the late game but a consistent early game is still very good especially when it means that you get access to items or vestiges and ascensions and Magma Miner's also still pretty much one of the only classes that has exclusive access to just gaining money because of reasons. Which, in the current state of the game, is exceptionally good because the game's now shorter and therefore we have less time to make money. And so you get an economy advantage. Alright, so, first skill is Bonk. It does a respectable amount of damage. But it doesn't have very good distance, physical damage. All of our abilities start physical damage, but we can type it over into other stuff. Uh, Leaping Strike is our movement skill. It's got a three-turn cooldown, which is quite significant. And this is where the Magma Miner rework kind of comes into play because it's per time that you hit an enemy. So if we jump into a group of four enemies, suddenly we have four stacks of heat. We gain two shield and... We have 40% more damage for something like, I don't know, a smash. Smash is our general payout attack. It costs 2, has a cooldown of 3. Cooldown of 3 actually isn't that bad, considering the fact that this is our primary like damage payout. And it starts at 120, which is quite significant when you start looking at uh, how much uh, other classes have to do for this amount of damage. And the fact that we just start with this. Some of the hardest enemies that we'll fight in the first few fights have around like 120, 150 health, so a couple stacks of uh, heat. We go ahead and we smash. It'll solve most of our problems. And this is kind of where we start to fall off in like the mid to late game is if we don't get this skill ascended, we could look at that, but we're going to just go ahead and hit that when we get there. We really need this skill to keep ramping in order to keep just that huge payout attack that can just solve problems for us. Otherwise, we're going to start running into difficulties actually like keeping things contained later.
Another big thing that they uh, did. Yes, please. We obviously want to do physical damage. Is we no longer get an ability when we start a run. Instead, what we do is we get a superior vault. Hmm. This is interesting. I generally think that burn builds are pretty bad. At least they're not as good as poison builds. They're kind of hard to invest into. But getting Beat of Flame here definitely changes that. I don't know. It might be a little bit crazy, but we might try that. Otherwise, uh, Thanatope's Tuft is pretty dang good. 5% crit basically doubles our crit chance. Doesn't necessarily mean that's going to happen, but getting a free cooldown is kind of nice. Uh, we'll take Beat of Flame, though. We'll... We'll go into this. We also start with an augment, which generally didn't... What the frick? I'm legitimately not sure I want any of these. Not that crit is bad. It's just that... I mean, I suppose the Beat of Flame doesn't have to stay on us, but it does literally nothing if we don't get burn. And we don't have burn right now, if that makes sense. So probably Thanatos Tuft was better. Not that we can do much about it now. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and, uh, I guess, take Critical Bonk. Because it's the skill that we're going to be using more often, and I'd rather not at this point gamble that smash is going to actually crit like it'd be nice if it did but uh okay pacifism is unpickable second phase is interesting don't really want to deal with proving grounds right now so we'll go ahead go to garden's edge So one of the main reasons why they um, made the game shorter, or at least what they did, was originally there was uh, three chapters. Now there is two. So they've cut the game down by like one, what they call book. I'm going to call them chapters because I have brain damage. But um, what they did was they cut it down because they thought that the runs were taking too long. So this is generally going to take uh, around an hour. Or at least usually they would take about an hour. We'll see how long they'll take with me ex trying to explain a lot of stuff. But uh, generally speaking, should take about an hour for those of you who are interested. You can also see the, the time of the video, so I don't know why I'm explaining this. I suppose if you're wondering about how long a run generally takes, that's useful. He doesn't have a script. The streamer's unhinged. Okay, this is relatively interesting. This power orb spawned in a very awkward place. I'm likely not going to be down here to get this later. So we'll go ahead and snag that. See if we can't hit all three people here. We can. Good stuff. I want to hit, hit... Go ahead, we'll smash that. We full block due to the fact that we have that new heat passive. So I wasn't really too concerned about that. This, however, is six incoming damage. That's a little spicy for my tastes. But there's really not much that we can do about that. Sorry, my mouse is just absolutely all over the place today. I want to make sure that I'm in that radius. I'm going to have to use an extra AP for movement. I'm going to have to eat this damage, but 
Again, we're gonna get that shield, so that's fine. This is hopefully gonna let the enemies come in at me. I have access to my leap again. Why are you always so weird? actually wondering if this isn't better because now we're going to start dealing 40 and then 45 that's going to be enough to kill both of these guys I just need to get out of that AOE right there then uh, let's just make sure I'm going to have to hit once We're kind of going into burn. Voice of Fortunes actually isn't bad. We'll take that. So as I said before, the economy is pretty much in shambles right now. And a huge dividing factor between good runs and bad runs is being able to generate more currency than uh, other players. Or other average builds. Again, not really competitive nature to the game. We're going to go ahead and... That's rough. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Mainly because I have a quest to get here. And I'm kind of hoping to get more damage. Ability power is great. Because that will affect our burn Embrace and our heart. damage. So even if we don't really get to the point where we're... We still never take potions. I don't know why I was looking at those for a long. Um... In the last part of the game, you could get potions out of these little destructibles that I'm running around and destroying. So there was really no reason to ever go to a potion. Well, they buffed the potions to make people want to use the potions. And then they ended up just uh, removing them from uh, the destructibles. So now I'm definitely not <laughs> going to go get potions. And uh, the reason why I feel like they're particularly bad is because it's potions, money, which I've already stated is very tight in this game right now, or the chance for a key, which we can turn in to get a relic, which means that we technically save money. Like, it's, it's money, but better. But due to the fact that the game's shorter, you may not even see a place to cash out the key. So it basically just becomes... Um, do I have money? Go for money. Is it a choice between a potion and a key? Take the key and hope that we, you know, pay out. Especially because when you go to the place that has the key, you get more money. So it's based, it pays itself off. And potions just do something once and then they will uh, not do anything anymore. Which is a little spiced, you might think. And I would agree with that. I have suggested that um, they almost go the same route as Arcanium. And make it so that each round you can... Or not each round. Each fight you can spend your potion and then bring them back to where they were before. Because then at least it's a positive growth because it's a cooldown that you can use every single time. But we're not here to talk about, like, my feedback and stuff like that. Um, these uh, little spear dudes have been changed to always hit you, no matter where you're going. At least I thought so. They must have an attack that does... Actually, wait, no. This guy doesn't have a spear. He has a sword. And that's why he can't hit me? It's a little weird. I'm not going to lie. Well, regardless. You want to move here pop that thing. I don't ever want to see it again. Just get out of this guy's range. I was going to go ahead and support absolutely nobody. Ooh, 
refractory is pretty good. Um, I don't know. It's just a question of do we actually lean into burn? I think we're going to pivot out of burn here. 20% uh, more damage is also very good. I think that it's almost better than Refactory in most cases, but uh, that's not necessarily true. Refactory has a bunch of uses because it technically counts as a hit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take physical power. We're, we're honestly just saying um, if we find burn, we find burn. Anyways, going back uh, to changes. Um, so you're hearing me probably give like a whole bunch of relatively negative feedback about the fact that they changed the way that the game is paced and there's all sorts of repercussions because of that. I do recognize that this is a game in flux, right? Like we were technically playing, playing the pre-alpha before. This is, they classify it as a demo, but that's basically because of how Steam prioritizes air quotes demos versus air quotes betas. You can market a demo, you can't market a beta or stuff like that until you launch into early access and that comes with its own stipulations. So I understand that the game is in flux. They're happy with the way that the game is as far as the pacing, but they do recognize that the rewards obviously weren't scaled to match. And so that's leaving a lot of people, like you'll see at the end of this run, unless of course we pop off, right? We're going to have like, Maybe two of these abilities be ascended into gold. We might have a fourth ability. It's sometimes now better not to do that. We definitely probably won't have a uh, fifth ability. And we're only going to have, like, honestly, a couple of these little upgrades. So it feels like you have half a build. Like, obviously, I'm not talking from the purpose of, like, in the pre-alpha... We had all the power in the world and we could smatter everything. Me and a couple of the other, uh, like, if you want to call them testers, right? Uh, the other players in the pre-alpha were literally doing stupid runs on purpose just to feel something. And so that's obviously not where you want to be. So I feel like the, the overall player power is a about correct it just needs to be notched up a little bit more and it's just that the the game's in a weird spot right now but the devs acknowledge that they're working on it anyways of these i think we honestly want all of these could be good i'll tell you what a lot i know chain lightning's pretty good for us because it allows us to make smash and aoe and hit theoretically everything on the map if it gets ascended invigorate is good if it gets ascended a lot of people have been talking about shield wall like all of a sudden it's like absolutely magnificent now i've ran shield wall and don't feel that way so we're gonna take it and see if we can't get it to pop off um i would like a better vault please anyways yeah, feel free to still, like, obviously download the free demo uh, while NextFest is running. It'll be running until February 16th. Try out the game for yourself. Try it out with friends. And um, if you want to, stop by the Discord and give your feedback. Or, you know, press F8 right here and give your feedback on anything that you feel. You don't even have to go to the Discord. And they'll get all of that information and be able to, you know, work with that. Kind of a fan of that. Um, we are going to be able to eat this. And since uh, spikes now scales off of physical damage, we're going to do an amount to these guys. Nothing too spectacular. But it's free damage, and we like free damage. So we're going to go ahead and jump in on these guys again. Give them a little bit of a... A bop. A bop. We're full blocking. 
I actually don't know how we took damage there. Intriguing. One, 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 three, three. That might be why. I thought that those guys were doing one damage. They're probably uh, doing much more than that. Oh well. I guess we're going to have to move about here. We now have four spiked, so we're almost going to watch out these guys. Just for making them hit us. You'll love to see it. There we go. Just trying to talk less this time as opposed to the last video so that I don't, uh, you know, make a mistake and get myself killed. Generally nice. We're utilizing this free movement to get out of uh, danger here. And then if we... Spikes here, like right here, we're fine. So we'll just go ahead and do that and sit on this one AP. I mean, we're going to just go ahead and smash this guy right here. And then see if we can't... Can't really line up a double hit there. Well, there we go. Your first attack is a guaranteed crit. It's a thing. Um, our jump being free is actually quite huge. I'm almost about that. Like, these are all very good. Tracker's Cleats is even good because um, whenever we use our leap, we get one evasive, which is pretty much just 100% dodge for one attack. That obviously really helps us out. But um, I think this helps us more out in the long run, like when we get other stuff. Carver's Refuge. So, the Carver's where we're able to buy stuff. And again, economy is bad, so we want to use our money on the things that are going to most impact our build. Which is either binding empowerments or waiting until the absolute end of the game. There's a shop there that almost always guarantees a legendary in each roll of the shop for reduced price of uh, 500 quillings. So... That's generally what we want to save our money for. However, I do kind of want a extra binding uh, empowerment here. And I'm not really concerned about not getting it. Another thing that you may have noticed is that uh, we're already fighting the boss and we haven't had a lot of choices. Not only is each node only presenting two choices now instead of three... But they're also, um, we had to grab our binding draft in like the middle of that act. And that came at the cost of not making another choice. So it, my feedback was that a choice should also be there so that we can get a little bit more growth and everything would probably feel fine. Okay. Chance to spawn an orb on hit. This got nerfed. Excuse me? You could also see quickly. Bringing that down to two. That way whenever we get our orb we're able to go ahead and leap. And then this is going to be free every single turn. Extracting smash. Like this is all pretty good. But we have to choose only one unfortunately. I'm going to go with extracting smash here. We need just a little bit more money. We'll get that here though. It's 
pretty good. There we go. No, we want this to be purple so that we're not being targeted. And it seems like we're not quite able to hit that heart box. That's quite misfortunate. So I think what I'm actually going to do is instead uh, shield up. Hit this man instead. I'll take that damage. We're admittedly in a bit of a way here. Took a little bit more damage than I expected to take there. Uh, detonate would be good if we actually roll in some burn stuff, which we didn't, so that's not going to happen. We're instead going to go with demolish. One, because obviously it's easier for us right now. It stays physical damage up here at the top right. And it gives us money when we hit things. Um, which, as I said, is uh, pretty good. And now we're going to add some AoE onto that so that we can AoE a ton of things and hopefully destroy them. The only thing that we would possibly want now is like maybe Mega Smash or Reduce Cost. If we could get either of those, we're pretty good right now. Brain Tuna is great. We always want to keep our fish. Extra Font of Wisdom here. Um, Of these, just give me more crit chance, honestly. It's kind of a feels bad. I really don't want to give enemies extra attack, but I also don't want to be rooted. Not sure we have much of a choice, though. But this is just going to feel absolutely terrible on Magma Miner. We definitely don't want to do this. And you know what? We forgot to go back for our uh, Ascended Binding, but I guess we got money now. Again, we'll be perfectly fine. Hopefully. Famous last words. We want to hit as many things with this as possible. Excellent.
Okay, goodbye. And that gives us an orb. That's right. How could I forget? So we can eat this. We're going to keep this orb here. good about that. It's a little awkward. There we go. I honestly don't think that that was potentially even worth it. Probably should have saved that for next turn. Anyways, here we are now. with one. Good thing this doesn't cost anything. Holy snap. Uh, the unstave? Not quite sure I'm familiar with that. Should be good for us. Hopefully. really just in there, huh? So as you can see, from one fight, we've almost doubled the amount of money that we got from the entire first act, thanks to Demolish. A little bit overtuned, maybe. Uh, Harold's Sandals, in combination with Archaic Innards, is pretty good. Every turn, we get access to our Leap. It is going to uh, be free, and we get a little bit of crit, a little bit of crit damage. And just kind of nice. The unstave. You take 50% less damage, does not stack. Um, okay. Seems like a win to me. Famous last words. So this has to be pretty good for me to want to take it. Um, cultivate is pretty good, but... I don't think that we have a very good, uh... What Cultivate's very good for is when you have a very strong turn one and you're just sitting there on extra will, so then you can plant a flower that's eventually going to be a lot of will later. And then that way you can have a power turn later on in the fight. And then later, of course, this can give you damage and other sorts of things. We don't really have a very strong turn one, and we kind of still do need to kill things. So while Cultivate is still very good, is it worth us less likely getting the abilities that we want here i don't think so because the augments and the ascensions are going to bog down our pool and we want to have easy access to those restoration we're hardly taking any damage we take 50 percent less damage now uh cone of frost not very good for us like 
you can run this as magma miner but generally speaking i run frostbite as a magma miner support when you have other stronger builds like a couple of moss cloaks that are definitely better than you you just sort of like carry the early game and then just sort of step aside put frost on people so that every time that um moss cloaks are doing their freaking rogue shit that uh frostbite's going off and that way they can invest in damage you invest into frostbite it works out pretty well so we're honestly gonna leave these We have the slot, so we'll go ahead, we'll get a key. A hard fight with how we were just playing, though, is a little bit spooky. As you can see, our damage hasn't really been popping off. We haven't gotten a lot of stats. We've got A ability power, some physical power, most of that is actually from these training weights. And then some crit chance, some crit damage, but of course that's also from our artifacts or vestiges. And this is sort of where I'm talking about, like, I feel like the the rewards are just a little bit lacking. Generally speaking, the player power is good, but we could use, like, a couple more stat shrines. Because right now you're just always hoping that you get a good legendary that can actually carry you. And this might be able to carry us. Also note, when you're looking at how much damage we're taking, I'm pretty sure that it does not count... Yeah, it's not actually reducing all this by 50%, so we're actually going to take 11, which still isn't uh, the amount that we want to take, so we're going to want to do something about that. That's well, going to be a little weird not attacking the money pot with that, but uh, just take my word for it. We need to take these guys off the map as soon as possible. Mainly because they're just so constricting. And we still managed to get 50%. This has AoE. We might be able to get you as well. Boosh. I'm debating that money pot. We could at least get one payout, but I think what we need to do is actually just, uh, well, crit that thing in the face works. I like critting that thing in the face. Now this enemy's probably priority number one because after the, his first attack, he's gonna root us in place. Now we do get access to our movement skill every turn, so maybe that's actually not that big a deal. These enemies, now have infinite range, so you're going to take damage from them. Thankfully, we are Magma Miner, and on top of that, we are Magma Miner with uh, an unstave. So, honestly, we do not care. So what I honestly think we're going to do is after our turn, we're going to put on Shield Wall, and that actually might be enough damage to kill these guys. Kind of hilarious. Again, just using our Demolish to just get rid of the big threats on the map. So this is... One, two, five? We can honestly stand here? No, we can't, because we don't have the AP to get there, so we'll just use this. Hmm. 
Oof, that didn't kill. It's kind of a big deal. I mean, we're fine. But we kind of need that orb to keep our uh, smash off cooldown. And so now we're kind of in a way. I want this guy to get out of the goop. So we're going to head up here. If he wants to root me, he can root me. But I'm not going to make it easy for him. There we go. He thinks he's being cheeky. Um, I don't really care for it. Reduce cooldown of shield while ball in. I actually really like that. I also like larger AoE, now that heat works differently. Uh, Smoldering Bonk was way too late. I like Quicken Wall. Let's take Quicken Wall. Give me more raw physical power. We have a slot, so we love getting a key. Hmm. I think this late, we are not necessarily about to see breach. These are all looking pretty good. Uh, cheese cards I don't think actually is that good for us now. It's way too late in the game. If we would have gotten that earlier, because again, this is a green relic here, uh, that'd be amazing. However, Shattered Crown is just straight up a ton of damage. And getting free cooldowns is also pretty nice. Um, we're going to go with the Shattered Crown. Loads of money. I want those enemies to come over here towards me, so we're going to just set ourselves right here. This is honestly perfect. Unfortunately, Shattered Crown doesn't really stack like that. We can afford to re-roll this. We got more than enough health. I like Ringleader's Hat with our current setup. Harmonizing Whistle is also very interesting, considering the fact that we, uh... Technically, Shield Wall is a magic... So this would make it so that as long as we use Shield Wall and Demolish, or honestly anything, we get extra cooldowns. 
I kind of really like that. The ringleader's hat is just good because it's just another chance for one will, or a guaranteed one will, which means that we can stack up everything much easier. We're going to try the harmonized whistle, and that definitely replaces Beat of Flame. Again, we really didn't get burned early enough. Feels bad, man. We love seeing more physical power. There's our treasure trove. Again, we always skip a uh, carver currently. Hmm. Um. Pulsar belt seems really freaking good. I'd be willing to drop the chance for plus one will to deal physical reflect. All right. Let's use this first. Interesting. Okay. That's six spikes. Plus, we're going to get hit while we have shield. So, um, hella damage. Seems pretty good to me. basically want to keep those spikes up. Of course, our enemy is in a very precarious spot. I think this deals some damage to me, but I'm okay with that. I need homeboy to come in here.
I guess I could have also done this. Gotten more money. Do some more cooldowns. And I think I can honestly... He's dealing 11. Yeah, we're fine. this half damage taken this is generally a very hard fight for magma miner because of the fact that he likes to go off into the edges here and then you never see him again but that was very smooth we pretty much didn't even have to think much there Just gonna go ahead and leave some feedback here. So they added a little bit more area to the last zone. Uh, we're going to do one hard fight here. And then we're going to have a shop, then we're going to have the final boss. But I'll be straight up with you, we are looking very fine here. Seems pretty good to me. Why is Harmonic Whistle gaining, like, multiple... Huh. That's crazy. Um, that's some feedback. <laughs> okay. If you say so, game. Frickin' 42 stacks.
Just making sure I get my kill here. It's kind of important. Yeah, these guys are just straight up killing themselves on me. And there's just straight up nothing that they can do about it. It's terrible. kind of hard to hit multiple things here. Um, I guess we're just going to go ahead and smash this bat then. Because I want that orb. Because I want to use this. Because it is just straight up better than us attacking at this point. Like, that is a frick ton of spikes. So this is happening. I mean, I don't think that the plus five shield is necessary, but we'll go ahead and we'll do it. A little late for you. Yeah, none of these are particularly appetizing. Unearth Relic is interesting. I like Sparking Battery Coil. We'll go ahead and we'll buy that. I no longer really feel... Well, Shattered Crown's still pretty good here. We still kind of want all this. Uh, Sparking Battery Coil can replace that. Gain Ability Power on Dodge. Kind of funny. Um, just gaining 10 Ability Power because of reasons is pretty good. I feel like our Spikes already has stuff under control. I think we can get rid of Pulsar Belt. And then I think that's pretty much our build. And as you can see, because we have one ability to make money, the world is our oyster. Does not stack. No. Hmm. Rita's mistake is also like pretty ridiculous, honestly. Uh, but this this seems like our setup. Uh, if we didn't take the we are rooted deal, then I would 100% be willing to get rid of these for some more legendaries. But unless something absolutely wows me, like another miser's purse, <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know. It'd 
But if I buy the Meister's purse, then Meister's purse won't activate, so we can't buy anything. Meat meow. Almost was blinded by the greed there. All right. So one thing that they definitely did do is they made it much more apparent, like, what exactly this boss is doing. They only take 90% of damage whenever we deal damage to them. However, they take 100% of the damage dealt to tentacles. They gain 60% DR when they spawn in, and then over time they will lose 20% DR. And so we basically just deal damage to them. Let's go ahead. I'm not sure we even really care about any of this stuff because um, we're about to have so much fucking spikes. Granted, we're not going to be able to really kill stuff with uh, Demolish, so we're going to lose quite a bit of spikes as well. Whereas before, we could even kill, like, you know, little Plink mobs in order to... Uh... Should have done that first. Grab that. And we're just gonna pop, pop. I guess we are gonna get this kill. Might as well get the AOE in there. That's nice. Go ahead, hit that again. want to get on this guy here. And basically static coil is just helping us go pretty much nigh infinite here. That's great. Because I want to use that. And I want to get hit by everything if possible. Oh, I guess we could move here even. Take a little bit more damage. All right. I'll be honest. You can go ahead and laser beam me. I think this boss is honestly dead. He's about to take so much damage from these guys. And we're pretty much just setting ourselves up to kill them in the event that he doesn't die, which he didn't. So we took barely any damage. And now we're just coming in here to absolutely murder this thing. Poor guy. So yeah, that was kind of ridiculous. Again, I feel like there's a little bit of balance issues there, but... Um, Otherwise, game's still relatively easy, but that's still, besides being able to bankroll the end there, the difficulty feels a lot better, whereas the main complaint that a lot of people were having before was, okay, I understand that this is a demo and very, very, very early access, right? It was a pre-alpha te technical test. They were like, yeah, game's, game's like, way too easy. Like, could you make it harder? Like, it, it's a technical test, all right? Like, just chill. But, um, barring, like, ridiculous shenanigans for each class, I think that the balance of the game is much better. I just think, again, we're currently in silver, and when you have an average run, it feels, like, okay. 
it needs to probably feel a little bit better in Silver 3, especially when you consider that there's going to be more difficulties coming after Silver, like, I don't know, Gold, Platinum, Chartreuse, um, Exoslin, whatever you want to freaking call it, right? So, if it's feeling, like, gritty now, we need to dial up that player power by just a bit, because you can't really rely on stuff that is an inherent balance flaw like being able to farm money off of minions because not everybody has the ability to farm money off of minions and you can't really have it uh, balanced off the fact that well okay um, what else did we have all sorts of like being able to reduce our cooldowns multiple times in a turn I don't know maybe all that is uh, like intended but I guess mainly the economy thing really <laughs> anyways Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, or you have any feedback, be sure to leave it down in the comments below. Any questions, concerns, comments, missed play alerts, and if you want to help support Inkbound, you can go to Steam, NextFest, download the demo, get your friends to play the demo, wishlist the game, and until next time, we'll catch you guys around.